Hey YouTube, Mark from Advanced Electronic again. Okay, we're back with the uh, radiant oscillator circuit that I built and uh, after the discovery of the Avermenko plug uh, being connected to ground for an additional uh, dump path of radiant energy and return path, um, I have figured what I'm going to do is uh, we had a request to add a normal charger to see what kind of a uh, uh, wattage is going to be used for a normal charger to charge these caps. Unfortunately, the caps are almost charged to begin with. So um, these charge up to about 16.2, 16.5 volts. I try not to get them up that high because uh, damages them. You get a lot more cycles out if you can charge them to, you know, 14 and a half, 15 volts. So um, I'm at the uh, the upper part of the range. I just connected these in parallel to test and see if there was any additional uh, load on the source to charge a second 60 farad bank in parallel, which makes this 120 farads. That's 120 million microfarads. So. Um, Here's what we're going to do right now. I'm going to go ahead and, and energize the circuit and show that it's charging. Right now we're at point 0.3. Our, this is our output for the radiant oscillator that connects to the, the bank. I want to show you what the amperage or the, the wattage is. This is a 19 volt, just as any other video, 19 volt computer charger that is connected through the switch. I turn it on and the circuit idles at about 8.5, 8.6 watts, between 8.4 and 8.6. And um, now I'm gonna go ahead and make the connection. This yellow wire connects to this cap bank. These two have a parallel set. They run into this plug connecting both sets together. Um, I'm gonna go ahead, the black is going to my meter right here. And the meter's off, but I'm gonna go ahead and connect this if I could do it with one hand okay now we're connected I'm gonna turn the um, the voltmeter on to see what we have for voltage we have 14.18 now it's charging right now so it's going up 14.19 and the wattage is still exactly the same as before there's no additional load it's charging both sets they're at 14.2 volts right now now I'm probably going to have to discharge these a little bit because the the 12 volt charge is going to think that they're fully charged. So let me go ahead and disconnect this system. I'm going to disconnect it from charging the output here, and I have to also uh, shut down the the uh, circuit. So let me shut it off, and I'm going to disconnect this here. So I need the black wire to connect to my charger from the um, the meter. We're going to connect a small Schumacher uh, battery maintainer, which is not a radiant energy device. Sorry for the movement of the camera. Um, I have to make sure that this isn't shorted to ground anywhere. And we probably be able to get those probes out of there. Okay, now let's see um, the charger output. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to test and see if this Our negative is connected. Our positive is connected now we have 14.24 volts now I have to unplug this from the kilowatt meter that was the uh, charger or the um, the computer charger and I'm gonna go ahead and plug in the Schumacher charger I apologize for the wobbling here uh, trying to do this best way possible okay now the charger just turned on and we'll see if it kicks on and charges these okay it's just kicked on now we're at 20 it keeps rising to 26 a little bit faster of charge but 
we're using uh, 30 plus you know it's probably gonna go up to 50 watts or so I'm not sure I have to just watch my voltage here that we don't overcharge it is charging rapidly now but uh, it will stop it it'll recognize that the voltage is all the way up and it does take uh, longer for the radiant oscillator to work but we don't use any additional energy by adding another bank on there it's using eight and a half watts or 8.3 to 8.6 watts all the time and this one uh, you know boosts up it's gonna stay somewhere around uh, between 15 and 20 depending on how high the voltage gets but um, 30 watts respectively to start charging and as it uh, starts to you know go down further the wattage goes lower when these things are down at like uh, 2 volts you know we're getting a, there's a lot of amperage needed to charge them and that battery charger goes up as high as it can at 2 amps um, which is uh, 240 watts so they're you know we're saving a lot of energy and charging these both within just about five or ten minutes so if we have multiple banks that we can charge at the same time you know do two banks at a time we can drop these two banks at one time onto a battery that's connected to an inverter so we can get from a battery or a couple of batteries into um, systems like this all day long 60,000 watts out of this because these are uh, 60 farads each good for uh, one uh, thousand watts per farad, so it's sixty thousand for each bank. So we're only going to be using about uh, one quarter or one eighth of that energy. So the voltage isn't too low. So it doesn't take that much time to recharge these capacitor banks. So within uh, two to three minutes of use on the battery in these two cap banks from an inverter, we can use thousands of watts uh, of output and not have these things driven down more than one tenth we take it off for one tenth of the time swap the next charged bank over dump them into the battery and recharge or finish the charge off that's been drawn off of these so um, that's the beauty of having these uh, 8 watt circuits we can make as many as we want and uh, connect them to several different ground sources each ground source has a different amount of energy coming from it so what we pulse into the ground we're gathering lost or wasted energy, I believe, from other places. Conventional energy where, uh, say, factories used motors. They have pulses that are actually going into the ground uh, when those uh, motor coils hit an open spot between uh, one coil and the next. It's discharging its back EMF and it's collecting in the ground. So every time that we uh, dispose of a burst of energy into the ground, it pumps up a, a bubble of energy in the atmosphere. The earth acts as a capacitor. So just as if uh, we were putting energy, uh, negative energy into a capacitor on the negative side, the positive side would equalize and become that same amount of energy. So if we have 12 volts of negative energy going to a cap, the positive side will say 12 volts on it. Um, and that's how this works. We're pushing it by induction into uh, the earth's surface and it's also inducing the energy that's being pushed into the earth's surface from the inductor in its uh, down point so you're building up energy it's pushing a bubble of energy to the atmosphere then it's releasing with all that pressure and going into the earth and it's oscillating it while it rings so if we're in resonance it's uh, creating thousands and thousands of waves that we could pick back up from the air with only one wave being put in it's one pulse so uh, that's the reason why it seems to be like an over unity. It's um, we're not getting more out than we put into it. The earth is responsible and mother nature is responsible for this energy's release. We're releasing energy and drawing back or harvesting energy that's already been wasted from other users. And, you know, when we turn around and say, yes, it's an over unity system, it is. It's outputting more than we're putting into it. But it doesn't mean that we're making this energy. It's man it has to manifest from somewhere. We can't generate and make energy. A generator does not create energy. It draws it from somewhere and moves it from one place to the other. But what science has not told us is that each uh, piece of copper holds a charge. Each, uh, <clears throat> there's dip, uh, voltage differences between or potential differences between two different types of, of uh, metals and uh, when we put 
and uh, electrolyte between the two with some acidity to it, that voltage uh, is got, uh, it releases the charges into a, a positive and negative manner so it can uh, produce some sort of work. So we're just moving the energy from one place to another. I do not believe that we are making energy. As Newton said, energy can, cannot be created nor destro destroyed. Just uh, move from one place to another. And that's basically what we're doing here. So, like I said, um, the laws of physics state that I have to put double that energy in to put double the energy out. I doubled the energy and still have the same amount of energy going into the circuit. My question to everybody is this, where is that extra energy coming from? If it's not coming from here at 8.3 to 8.5 watts, and it's not coming from the capacitors or coming from the source, um, how are we getting it from the ground, if my theory is not correct? All right, I thank everybody for watching. I mean, in my next video will be discharged caps uh, charging with the battery charger to show that we need hundreds of watts to, to charge these things. Thanks for watching.